All right, guys, let's give this one another try. This is a Bufo Challenge Lock from Tobias and Julian. We know they claim to be uh, carpenters, woodworkers, but I think they're actually lock building ninjas. As I said, second attempt. Uh, I tried first for 10 minutes, no luck. I still have the key still mummified there. And hopefully we get into this thing without that stinking key. Um, tried for 10 minutes, a total failure. I did learn some things about the lock though, um, the hard way. I can tell you there's probably a lot of serrated in here and probably every single one of them. And there are some nasty, feels like serrated spool pins. So let's see if we can get into it. I have just the top of the keyway. This is a 30 thousandths top of the keyway and I'm going to be using a 25 thousandths. There's enough room to get this guy in there. A deforced diamond from the Praxis kit. I think it's got some marked on here somewhere. There you go. 23 thousandths of an inch. All right. All the way in. Very, very light tension. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see there is feedback. Doesn't really help, but there is a lot of feedback. All right. All the way in. Hardly any tension. I'm just barely holding that tension wrench in there. And I'm just bouncing until I get... There we go. A little bit of feedback on pin 3. And I got a click. And I don't want to push it too much. There's, I'm on pin 2 getting very slight feedback. And a little bit of a fault set there. Pin 1. A little bit of a... I'm not going to mess with him anymore. I think I overdid it on him last time. Alright, all the way back. Let's try this, try this again. Gotta work around that paracentric keyway a little bit. Alright. Looking for any kind of feedback. I do have a very slight fault set. A whole lot of clicking in there. I'm moving them and they make a crunching noise when you touch them. Barely moving them. Five stinking pins. I wouldn't think it'd be this hard. Okay, that was pin one. And let me tighten that up a little bit more. I might have overset him. I'm going to really watch that tension. This is proof it's not the number of pins. i got a good fault set going now. This is where I screwed up last time I applied too much tension thinking I had it and I seized them all up. I caused them to bind. Doesn't matter how many pins, it's the type of pins. Alright, i got a little bit of counter rotation there on pin 2. Come on, and this is where I almost break the pick. I'm going to have to undo this to get him to set. There we go, because I, even with that super light tension, I think I had bound him up on something. This must be a really sharp ledge right there. All mushy. There it is, pin three. We just got a click off of him. And he was the only binder on pin one. He's good. Oh, I heard something fall. Crap. Okay, I do have a very good fault set. I mean, this thing is wild. There must be like a T pin or something inside of there holding it up. Just unbelievable. It feels felt like it was almost open. Let me move that. A little better there. Now I'm on pin two again. I believe let me check everybody. Yeah, he's the only binder. And this is what it did last time. I'm gonna have to undo it. Because he's totally seized. He gives feedback and then he seizes up. Okay, I got my fault set back. Check two again. Yeah, he fell back down. That's totally on me. I'm going to really push him up this time. I think we got him. Maybe not quite. Okay, that was pin one. Pin two is back down. Okay, I got him that time without too much of a fight. Okay, that was five. 
And if it's possible to get a deeper fault set, I just did. Now I'm back on two. He's back down to the bottom. I got nothing here, guys. No feedback. And I'm giving it every chance. Okay, I got another click on three. I'm getting counter rotation on five. And two is back on the bottom. All right, I'm going to lighten up. I'm going to really let off, put him all the way to the top, force him up there. Now let's try it. Keep, maybe we can keep him from falling down now. In one counter rotation. Okay, good. Wow, very deep. Okay, I'm on four counter rotation. Crap. Two is back down. Oh, there it is. Yes! What a nasty lock. All right, only five pins. It's not about the number, it's about the quality of the pins. When you got lock ninjas in Germany, Working on these things. That's what you got. All right, let's go ahead and bust it open. I do have a key here, so I can go ahead and lock it back up. Let's pop this dude off, get everything set up, and see what's inside of this thing. I think every single one of them must be serrated, and there have to be some almost like Christmas tree pins we'd find in an ASA lock. Okay, let's take a look at the key. Where did he go? That does not look bad at all. Let's make sure it works. Kind of crunchy, but it does work. It gets caught up. But it doesn't matter, it does work. Alright, so there we go. Let's go ahead and get a follower in there. Now, I don't know what that looks like, some kind of wood putty in the back of there. Don't screw it up, Bill. Alright, we're getting hung up here. Um, I am going to stand by. Let me get a shim. Probably shouldn't keep those things secured quite so well. And I'm going to try to shim what I believe is a T-pin in there. And hopefully that will allow us to slide all those dudes out without too much destruction. There we go. Excellent. Alright. Doing this dude. Nothing unusual so far. Yeah, now we're starting to see some weirdness. See some undercutting in there. Okay, we got a serrated, we got a standard. Serrated, one serration only. Serrated, put that down a little bit. And serrated, and yes, beautiful work here. Um, come on, focus, focus, focus. Look like, you can see some undercutting. It looks like in chamber number two, number three, and number five, and it looks like number four is simply threaded. So is number one. So every chamber has some kind of modification to it. Beautiful work. No, no rough edges on that at all. All right, let's pull our shim out. 
and let's see what kind of alien technology these German lock ninjas have come up with. All right, we got a really weird looking, it is a very sharp, come on, focus for me. Very sharp, looks like a screw that's been turned down in the middle. And it's got a little safety band right in the middle. I don't know if that moves, we'll play with it in a minute. That might be a floating ring on there. Okay, the next one, we actually have, looks like two pins in here. The first one, again, looks like it was made out of a screw. Very sharp edges. Almost like a little baby Asa pin. And then he was sitting on top of something else here. What in the world? Oh, it's a, just a wafer. All right, number three. And he looks like a very tall steel spool. And again, we've got the serrations on the top. Very sharp edges. Man, this is good stuff. Now I see why I had so much trouble with this thing. Number four. Another serrated. And the last one. Let me get that spring out of there. Whoop. And the last one. Another spool. Wow. Okay, the top of this has been removed. Let me get that last spring out. Come out. There you go. Okay, all the springs are different as well. Every single one of them is different. And in the Bible, this is going to be difficult to see here. You never have a flashlight handy when you need it, do you, Bill? Hmm. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and take the top of this off and see if they are indeed, yes, they are plugs. And I'll guess wrong, no question. It's, I'm going to go for the 116th. And of course, these are probably some kind of weird size. And of course, that's wrong. There we go. Five sixty fourths. Okay, all these are going to be threaded in the top, but I'm hoping to be able to see down inside of there and see if maybe there's something weird inside of the Bible itself. Other than what we normally see be threading. Okay, every single one of these is threaded all the way to the bottom. I curse myself. Where is my flashlight? Never handy. I think I couldn't afford flashlights or something. Okay, they look like they were threaded all the way, but they are not. On chamber number two there, we have some kind of indentation, but these are not threaded all the way to the bottom. They're threaded almost all of the way, so they probably would interact with the driver pins once you pushed them up into the chamber. They're threaded, and again, I'm guessing here, they're threaded roughly right where my thumbnail is, so that's where the threading stops. So it would be smooth going into the Bible, but then it would start to catch as it gets a little higher up inside of the, where all those threads are. Anyway, sorry for the clumsiness, but hey, I'm learning about these locks just as I open them, just as you are. So sometimes it doesn't go as smooth as I hope. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Thanks for your patience. Stay safe. Stay legal. Tobias and Julian, thank you, sir. Sirs, for another Alien Tech lock. Thanks, guys.